Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dooler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com and now here's crappie hippie at the bench hello everybody and welcome to crappie hippie at the bench today uh, what the topic we're going to cover is doing two-tone jigs uh, i like to do my two-tone jigs basically in three ways one with just a little bit which i call a streak uh, jig like a bleeder streak or uh, a black streak in a jig i also like to do um, a back stripe which is just a little wider, uh, kind of imitates the natural striping on, you know, how fish are, tend to be darkened on the back and then lighter on the sides and really light on the bottom. And then, of course, you finally have a true uh, bicolor jig, a true two-tone kind of half-and-half -half jig. So we're going to just cover uh, the different degrees in which you can highlight a jig with a contrasting color. And uh, I'm going to throw on the old glasses here so I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to start off just doing one with what I call a bleeder streak. So we're going to take this, this nice white jig right here. And we're going to give it, let's do white chenille on this one. Um, and we're just going to put in um, a little bleeder streak on it. And the main thing you got to remember is that when you tie jigs, um, you're tying upside down. And this is true of uh, some flies as well. But uh, uh, so as you orient yourself on the jig, remember that this is actually the belly and this is actually the top, the back. And so that's how you tie your materials generally go on from dark to light because you want that dark color because you're never a bird or what have you, another fish or whatever that's looking down is going to be looking at the bottom of the lake and the other and the fish the small fish want to blend in with that and when a fish is looking up from below the belly is light so it'll blend in with the clouds and the sky and the sun and make them harder to see that way okay so what i'm going to do is just take a nice piece of red marabou and um, i'm going to just i'm not going to rip the whole side off of here i'm going to just take about that much it's all it takes. You got to remember that. Let me take about like that, okay? I guess you got to remember that uh, the fish are uh, a lot closer to their to your work than you are when they're doing their work, and uh, therefore, okay. So see, I want that no longer than the you know the length of the entire jig, and I'm going to make it just a little shorter actually because it's cold and we're doing a lot of cold water fishing and then we're fishing off the boat slips and such. And and then you just kind of want to roll that around just a little bit. And <clears throat> we'll get rid of this here with a little snippety do. And uh, okay, so there you got your, your bleeder streak on the back. And all we're gonna do now is fill it in with a really nice white jig and this time I'm you know because this is the main body color okay see how this is cut off in here alrighty I don't like that and I'm not going to use that I'll use that for something else I want these nice pointed fibers up in here and I'm gonna grab a big bunch of them and I'm gonna bring them together and I'm losing some good stuff here into my lap I'm gonna pick up uh, shake out the, anything that's come loose and worry about that later. Okay, and I'll look at that. And I got a lot of a lot of material there. I'm going to bring it in a little tighter. Cut that off. Uh, I'm real OCD about gathering up stuff that falls in my lap. Uh, I'll put these little fibers in here too. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and tie these in, but I can tell you right now I'm going to be tying some more in because this isn't enough to make the, the kind of body I want to make on here. Whoops. 
bumping cameras. And then we'll see how this goes. Yeah, that's just that's you know that's like a skinny skinny half and half jig, and we don't want that. We want another nice, big, fluffy piece of boo. We're gonna get that right now. jig we're gonna come down here and that'll be a fun little jig I'm gonna pull that one out because it's just way longer than all the rest okay so there we go nice uh, nice tie up and, and really just basic quick finish throw in your your chenille and if you're new to the channel well you know that I don't uh, I always buy medium chenille. I do have some fine chenille also, but mostly I buy 90%, 95% of the time I'm just buying medium because I can get, works the best, you know, I can make it work in so many situations. Anyway, on a 16th, sometimes I'll just tie, tie it kind of skinny. And I probably should have tied this one skinny since I left the tail kind of skinny. But, you know me too, I like to wrap. Now you've got to pull that tight. You want that chenille to be tight. And I like to wrap off the cards. So I basically have zero waste. But if you want to just cut it off in pieces and do it that way, it's actually a lot less hassle to do so. So anyway, nice, thick, juicy looking body on that one. And we'll trap it with the thread. And that's our chenille. And we got that one done. Then we grab our Sally Hansen's here, which is just Sally Hansen's Extreme. Um, you can use Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, whatever, but Sally has the best. At least that's what I read on the blogs, and that's a lot of what a lot of my friends use. And some people say, oh, you can just use anything, and you probably can, but my golly. Ms. Hansen wouldn't be so successful without us fishers also buying her nail polish. One, two, three. See, I'm just twisting over, okay? And I pull it down. And then I'm going to do a little extra. My jig's trying to slip, so I got to, oh. And I'm rocking the entire table. Three, and down. And I just, oops. I just want to take this and feel that knot tighten up wiggle it a bit to get it to go down in there and snap it off and there we're done got a nice jig with a nice bleeder streak on it and uh, that'll look like a fish that's you know lost some of its skin or it's bleeding out its gills or its gills are flared but anytime there's red involved um, they tend to want to go nuts okay now we're going to fatten it up this is a pattern I call peppermint candy, and it's red and white. You can't go wrong. It's classic, classic, classic. So I'm going to finish this one with red chenille. So I'm going to take this here, and uh, let's start this up. And do the usual. Down we go. Down we go. Wrapping that tag in a little ways back. I'm going to start my boo somewhere in there. And got that like that. Okay, and now, now we need more red. So let me get a new piece. So now we're not going to just grab a little piece. We're going to grab a pretty good size piece, like about like that much. Okay, and we're going to get a big red back stripe like this. Really going to turn them on. You know, this is one of the days where they're running school fish or. They're just, they're just in a big feeding mood and they want something really easy. And I got that it's about right. I don't want to have a tail that's too long. That gives you a lot of short strikes. And you really can't do much with marabou or bucktail after it's already tied on in terms of shortening it. You can kind of tear marabou down to make it shorter. But 
it's always best to just tie the jig right to beginning. Two loose wraps, pull straight down, tighten it up. And you can see it kind of spinning on me, so I'm going to hold it in place. And I'll pinch it down, and I'm going to get this little afro of red feathers off of here. And yes, I'm going to have to get out the broom because I'm just letting it fall on the floor. Don't want to be in trouble with Mama. I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to really push the limits on this, and I'm going to add even a little more red to our peppermint candy jig, okay? So we're going to do one, two loose, straight down, pull it tight, and then wrap it in, okay? And then you got that big chicken comb right there. We're going to take you right on off there. Boom. All righty. So now, once again, I'm on a 16th ounce, lead-free. Bismuth majority alloy. It's called bullet bismuth. It's 88% bismuth and 12% tin. And it works just great. So now we're going to add the white part. And we'll get that. And we want more white than red. Otherwise, we're making a bicolor. But we're good. So we're going to make kind of a fat jig here. And that's going to be fine. That's going to be fine. And I really, are we quibbling? Yes, we're quibbling. We're always quibbling. You know, how much, now what's the difference between a back stripe and a, and a true bicolor or what's uh, or a true 50-50, you know, two-tone jig? Um, you know, let's not, let's not argue about these things because it's really not that important. Um, point is, is that we sometimes want a fat, a jig with a nice fat rear end on it, especially in the spring. And sometimes we want a skinny little jig, believe it or not. There we go. Now, now I'm see. Now I've got the proportion right, about two thirds to a third. Okay, and then straight down, and then I can get all that wrapped in. I can wrap all that in. See, this is where your fly tying guys roll their eyes because we get away with this kind of stuff all the time, <laughs> tying jigs, right? Right. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull this really tight, and I'm gonna come back down here. And I'm going to do a hitch just to keep it from, try to keep it from spinning around on me. Because that's your main problem. When if you get too material, too much material and you haven't tied it nice and tight. So, now I'm going to go ahead and put in the red. And I think because I have that thread so built up. And I'm just, I'm not going to do a down and back body. I'm going to do a one time down body. So I'm going to come down here till I'm basically even with that hook point. I'm going to take my red. Now, this is a nylon. It's a little bit uh, smoother. A nylon chenille. It's a little bit smoother than, say, the, the rayon, which is what this is. That's your standard. This is, they're both really inexpensive. Um, this is the original kind of what I learned to tie on rayon. It's a little more. I don't know, twisty and textured and so forth, but there's uh, nylon is perfectly fine. I like it perfectly well, and it does a great job. So get what you can get because I got nylon because the guy was out of rayon, and I needed some red red chenille, and by golly, I'm just going to get get the nylon. Why not? Okay, so tie that in, tie that in, give it some good wraps, bring down, and we'll let her hang. Okay. And like I say, I like to do this, take it around, take it around, and now hold on to your tail, but pull that tight, because that is what is going to keep your chenille on there and make your jig last. We talk about how long should they last, we usually lose them before, but if we don't lose them, 50 to 100 fish is what I want my, my jigs to hold up at. Okay, so you can see that's a nice, even body on that one. And see, all I did was three wraps. Two to catch it and one extra to hold it all together. And now we got a beautiful, very effective, old-timey, amazingly wonderful peppermint candy jig. And we're going to finish it off just like we always do. Oops, did I just get lacquer on the floor? I think I did. 
Glad Mama isn't here right now. I'll give you a chance to get it up here before she comes home. Two. Now you can do, like my friend Kim does seven of these around, and that's all he does and he's done. But I put in three, and then I come back and use the underhand method where I do it one, two, three twists down here, and one more over the top. And now you want to wiggle your thread down in there, break it off, and it seats right down in there, and there you go. You now you can see that's a lot more material on there. It's a lot more material on the jig. It's a, a super fun pattern. It's one to, if I only had a dollar for every fish I've caught on a, on a peppermint candy jig, uh, I'd take you all fishing. We'd all go down somewhere fun. All righty, peppermint candy jig right there, uh, bleeder streak jig. And I'll be right back in a minute um, with the true bicolor jig. All right, I'm back and had a little sip of water. And let me get back in my power goggles here, see what I'm doing. And let's make a true bicolor jig. And let's make a fun one now. Let's make a real bright, nice, fun one. Uh, I'm going to take this blue jig head. And the only powder paint I have is metallic blue. So when I want this cobalt blue, this royal blue, whatever you want to call it, um, I have to use fingernail polish. So I get out my 281, which is a, a tin alloy, tin majority. It melts at a real low heat. And then I just do them with uh, some nice fingernail polish. And once that dries, first I do a white coat, then I do a color coat, then I do a vinyl coat and yes if you keep dibble dabbing around on here with vinyl you'll make that uh nail polish break down and have a mess but if you just dip it and take it out and let it dry it'll be fine okay so you got to be careful combining chemicals and materials but this is one that happens to work and happens to work um really really well all right so we're going to get the blue and i need some pink chenille and i'm going to use this coral pink that I've got. I like it. Or I could use a piece of pink yarn. Um, you know, I want to change my mind here. What I'm going to do on the neck of this is use a piece of pink yarn because this is what color matches the in the way I want. And um, that's why I'm going to do it. So, yeah, you can just use this as acrylic yarn. So it's not really a natural material, but it does hold up well. It has, you know, like yarn, it's going to have these fuzzy wuzzies kind of coming off it, and that can either irritate you or be seen as a bonus, depending on who you are. Um, but uh, let's grab the pink thread. I love having, you know, I finally worked my way up. I broke down because uh, I found a place where I could get bobbins for four bucks a piece, and I went ahead and bought me... I already had two and I bought three more. So it's really nice not to have to restring a bobbin every time you change colors. Alrighty, here we go. I'm going to wrap it in all the way down. I switch to an eighth ounce jig. It's nice and big so we can all see what we're doing here. All right. And I hope the sound is coming out just fine. Okay, up and back, up and back. And that's just two get a nice bed of thread to help us hold our ingredients. Now, I'm going to start with the blue on this. This is one of the crazy combinations that I learned fishing with the young fellas, um, fishing with guys that have broke out of the old school and are building their own school, and that's awesome. But this is the darker color, so since the jig is upside down, I've got to tie this on first because the back goes on first and the belly goes on second. So I've got it kind of hanked off and got it measured out there pretty close. What I want, don't want it any longer than the overall hook shank. I have a jig that's about just like that. All right. And we'll go one, two loose, straight down, tie off. Okay. Yeah, you don't need the rest of that blue on there, I think. I think so. All right. Now, I, I do not know what 
or why this combination pink and blue works so darn good but it does uh, I see a lot of guys using it and uh, they swear by it and it's in everybody's tackle box these days including mine I'm not afraid of new stuff I'm not one of them guys all right I like to uh, I like to experiment I like to try new things I think there's always room for the next generation to come along and teach old dogs new tricks on the other hand I think it's a terrible mistake to just assume us old dogs don't have anything to offer because we do and we're real glad to to offer up a lot of us most of us um, I know there's some old farts that wouldn't give you a, give you a bit of information if you begged them but most of us are pretty easy going with it because what the heck people shared information with me people taught me people helped me out why the heck wouldn't I help people out myself that wouldn't that wouldn't fit with my personal philosophy okay now I got look now I got some pink and notice how this pink you know didn't get hit with a dye near as heavy as this pink over here so I'm gonna get fancy and of course start with the darker pink because the jig gets lighter as it goes towards the belly so we're gonna take this wonderful pink I got right here and I'm gonna take this pink piece right here and I'm gonna cut it off now this isn't the nicest piece of pink in the world it's got some short fibers in there but that's okay because we got a lot of feather going on this jig and we will use those to plump up the overall but I will put on some more some more boo on here and so those little and if they really annoy you you can just kind of pull them out but I'm gonna since I'm gonna put on a bot another another hank of pink and it's really spiky and pretty and wonderful I think I can get away with using some of that that boo that got cut kind of funny when they when they cut it yeah I think that's all gonna go together look just Jim Dandy all right get that eh. yeah yeah now we're gonna just throw that in there just like that just like that so we get that white now this white kind of stuff we're gonna have that facing up okay and that's gonna is it gonna look more natural well there's nothing natural about a blue and pink jig really <laughs> but we're still gonna follow the kind of the rules and uh, give it a big full beautiful pink belly and a nice full um, back uh, tone so see I've got about an even amount of each one on there even amount of blue even amount of pink and that's true bicolor two-tone jig now this thing is too darn fat for me to wrap off of this and I got this for cheap I got this whole thing for a dollar I think so I'm just going to cut it I'm going to cut it pl plenty long because I'd rather have a piece in the scrap bag than run short and have to tie in another piece not that it's a bad thing but it just irks me to no end to have to do it and so we're going to take this yarn and yarn's neat because you can untwist it and you can twist in different colors and you can do all kinds of stuff with yarn some guys don't like it but I think it's fine I think it's fun I don't use it exclusively because it is different than chenille but once again you know um, you're talking about um, you know a different texture a different look and uh, and then we can pull that tight just you know it's one thing about yarn it's gonna really pull tight it's really gonna stay on there it's really durable acrylic is super good and you know, the, that body weight isn't sending me I can go back down and come back up all right 
right, boy, I almost ran out, didn't I? I almost ran out. Making my big fat body jig there. I'm pulling it down tight. Pull it tight that way. All right. I'm get rid of that. All right. Take a few turns here. Gather that piece there and get it turned in. Okay, and I'm going to take my cement, go in, go in, go in, and then one, two, three, four. One, two, three. And Wiggle that down in. Try to get it down in there. Anything that's a little unshriveled. And there we go. And there you have it. Okay. Got a nice two tone jig we got a few things here that we might want to just shorten up just a little bit but there it is almost i got a little more pink in there than i did the the blue but that's a nice jig that's going to catch some fish it's a beautiful jig catches some fish all righty so that's it we've done on bleeder streak back streak and a true 50 50 two-tone jig so that's how you do it those are some ideas on making bicolor jigs this has been Crappie Hippie. Thank you for joining me today. Tight lines and Valentine's to y'all. Peace out.